Screw you guys. I'm going home. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube series on how to create a PC gaming console for your living room. In the last episode, we covered how to add games into Steam that didn't come from Steam, like Uplay or Origin or emulators. We want to focus this time on Steam family sharing. This is a very important feature for the system that we're building. If you have more than one gaming PC in your house, then this is a very important feature to get configured. If you're new to PC gaming, then it might surprise you to learn that before Steam offered this feature, PC gamers used to have to purchase multiple copies of the same games if they wanted more than one user in the house to be able to play a game. So we're going to open Steam here real quick. Okay, contrast this to an Xbox owner, right? If both me and my daughter wanted to play a game like Skyrim, for example, then we just take a trip to Walmart and we buy a copy of Skyrim. We give the cashier the $60 and we have the game. I can play the game upstairs and when I'm not playing it, I can give her the disc and she can go play downstairs. Okay, PC games, they don't work this way. Games are tied to user accounts and they can't be shared among users. At least that's the way things used to work before Steam started offering a family sharing plan. So you can see here that we're in Steam uh, and I've logged into an account. You can see by the little red family label here that I've already configured Steam family sharing uh, and I'm not currently logged into Steam family sharing. So the first thing that you would do is go to the account that you want to share the games. So in my particular case, I've got two young children and a wife. I typically buy all the games under my account and then they all have their own accounts and we link those accounts together and share a single family library together. There are some cases where I've bought multiple copies of a game where there's an online component that the kids want to play together or something like that, of course. I'll purchase multiple copies. Okay, so you've logged into the account. That's kind of the family account or your account that has all the game purchases that you've made that you want to share. So the first thing that you're going to do is in Steam, you're going to go to Steam and Settings and Account. Okay, so before you can get into this plan, you've got to make sure that all the accounts that exist are in good standing. So when you go to account here, you'll see the VAC status says in good standing and the security status says that it's been protected by Steam Guard and since the date it's been protected. Uh, you have to turn on Steam Guard for all of these accounts. So for this account, I had to configure Steam Guard for my wife's account, my daughter's account, my son's account, all of our accounts. We had to configure Steam Guard. To do that, you just click the option here. It says manage Steam Guard account security. And it will bring you up this uh, series of options of whether you want a mobile authenticator or an email authenticator or something like that. You choose what's appropriate for you. But once that's configured, then you can continue. So the next thing you're going to do here is you're going to go into the settings again and you're going to go to family. And then in the family library sharing, there's going to be a button here. My button says deauthorize this computer because it's already been authorized. If you're doing this for the first time, the button will say authorize this computer. So you can go ahead and click authorize this computer and it will authorize the computer to be shared. Once you've got a couple of computers and users configured, you can click this option that says manage other computers and it will show you all the computers that you've configured on this account to participate in this particular plan. Okay, so once you've done this on the primary computer, you'll need to basically go to the other computers that are on your network that you want to share your account with or share the plan with, and you need to open up Steam on each of those computers and log in with this account. And then once you've logged in with this account, you just basically go to family, click authorize this computer, it, under eligible accounts, you see these two accounts. This is my daughter's account. This is my wife's account. So when you log into your family member's computer, uh, Steam should know all the other accounts that have logged into that computer, and it will give you a list of, of users that you can share with. So just check off 
you know, the users in your family and uh, and click OK and you should be good to go. Now, once you've authorized all the computers, uh, the next thing you do need to do is manage the view, the family view. So the family view is basically all the accounts that are, are all the games that are available in this pool for all the users to use. So um, we're going to click manage family view. Uh, in this case, because I already have configured it, I've got a PIN number, so I'll type in my PIN there. And here you've got an option to disable family view, which still keeps the accounts all tied together and the plan is still intact. It's just there's no games to share. Um, and in this case, obviously this won't maybe not even be here if you've never done this before. I don't know. Uh, but basically what I do here, I always select only games I choose. Um, I've heard from others that all games is sort of bugged, but I always click only games I choose and then click continue. Here we're going to get a list of all the games in my library. Now I uncheck things like DLC or games that I got for free or things that were part of promotion. Um, and I also uncheck games that are I don't think are appropriate for the kids to play or I just don't want the kids to play stuff like South Park. Don't want the kids to play. Just uncheck it. Um, and again, you've got a search filter here to where you can filter. Now, the thing to keep in mind is every time you purchase a new game, uh, it won't automatically be added into the family view. So you'll purchase a game and the game won't show up in your library and you might get frustrated about that. I know I certainly have. Just remember that anytime you purchase a game, you need to come into this family view and find the game, call something like, I don't know, Skyrim. And let's imagine we just purchased that. You just check the boxes, they'll be unchecked. You check them off and now they'll be part of the family view. So once you've selected the games that you want to share, click continue and your address and then uh, provide a pin number a four digit pin and then click continue. Okay. Uh, and then this is explaining how you use the family view. So very simple stuff. Now what's going to happen here is once you've done this, um, now you start to see this little red label that says you're not in family view. So you just check, click that button, click OK to return to family view. Now it's green. I'm in family view. And now we see that I have an option under library called family games. So this will show all these games are shared amongst the whole family. So once you do this on the wife's computer, your daughter's computer, son's computer, all the children, uh, once you've done this, now they should all be able to see the family games and they act just like all the other games. They can just mouse over something, click install, and it will install and they're pretty much good to go. So that's pretty simple. That's uh, you know pretty much how you set that up. Now, there is one very big drawback, okay? If I'm sharing my library with my daughter, for example, and she's playing a game in the family library, and then I start to play a game from the family library, she's going to get kicked out of her game, okay? We aren't talking about both of us trying to play the same game, like we're both trying to play Skyrim at the same time. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about any game in the library. So she can be playing Skyrim in the heat of some boss battle, and if I start up Bioshock, for example, she gets kicked out of her game. Or if I start up any game, no matter what the game is, she gets kicked out of her game. So obviously that's a huge limitation, right? I mean, if I own two Xboxes, it's not like I can only play one Xbox at a time. It's not like, you know, I, you know, I'm playing Tomb Raider downstairs and because I'm playing Tomb Raider, no, you know, my daughter can't play, I don't know, Gears of War or something, right? Just because some, you know, imagine Netflix, you're watching Netflix downstairs in a living room and because you're watching it downstairs, you can't watch it upstairs for some reason, right? That, that's, that's what this limitation is sort of all about. So that's a huge drawback. And, um, you know, originally when I got into this, I actually regretted my choice to move to PC gaming because that, that limitation was too restrictive. It seemed ridiculous to me, like unjustifiably ridiculous. Well, it does turn out that there is uh, there is an alternative here. There's a workaround that you can use. Okay, the workaround's not necessarily ideal, but it's called offline mode. So here's the key here. Uh, I'm logged in to my computer and I'm the primary owner of the games that I'm sharing. So at any time, I can go up here to Steam, go offline, tell it to restart in offline mode. 
And once this thing restarts in offline mode, should be any minute now. Okay, here we go. Just taking a while. Okay, so I'm in offline mode. So, you know, those features like friends list, achievements, you know, the store, all this stuff, none of that stuff is available in offline mode. But hey, now I can kick off a game. And my daughter, who's playing out of the family sharing plan in her room on her computer, uh, she's not going to get kicked out. Now, more importantly, you know, for the focus of this particular series, we have built this, you know, fantastic home gaming consoles down in the living room. I mean, imagine if my daughter went upstairs and clicked off, you know, kicked off Peggle or something and it booted the living room PC out of the game. You know, you know, can't, can't have that. <laughs> so here's the thing, you know, like I said, you know, for the purpose of this particular series, the console we have downstairs in the living room, we pretty much just have that always logged in under my account in offline mode. So there's no chance that friends or family or anybody's going to be downstairs playing a game, you know, during Thanksgiving and then they get kicked out of the game or the game stops or something, you know, you can't have any of that nonsense. So um, there you go. There's a workaround that you can use. Um, there's some things that you should think about, though. Um, you know, like I said, you're not going to get the features like the achievements. You know, you're not going to uh, be able to look at your profile or get notifications from friends or any of that kind of stuff. You can't play online only games, of course. Um, you know, and, and another thing to consider here is that Steam family sharing is for families, right? It's not for friends or random internet people, right? I mean, if you exploit these features uh, to share your game library with people in different countries or people in your country that are across the street that aren't in your family, you know, you're really risking encouraging all those Steam partners to pressure Valve to remove these features. And, you know, we know a lot of publishers are not happy with these particular features and they'd be glad to see them go. So, you know, please respect that, that Valve is considerate enough to give us a solution that's somewhat comparable to consoles in the PC space. Um, I know I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm a very strong PC gaming advocate now after having figured all this stuff out personally. So anyway, sorry for derailing there. So I uh, just wanted to uh, do a quick video here to kind of show you guys about Steam Family Sharing. Again, if you're following the series, we never use Steam. You know, LaunchBox is kicking off all of our games. But keep in mind you know, that when you choose a Steam game from LaunchBox, it is launching Steam. So if you don't have family sharing set up, um, you know, or you don't configure this kind of stuff, then uh, that could be detrimental to your experience, you know, later on down the road. So uh, the other thing to consider, too, is if you have the opportunity to purchase DRM free games, games from good old games, stuff like The Witcher 3, uh, you can purchase from GOG that doesn't have DRM. So you could very easily buy The Witcher 3 from good old games, install it on multiple computers, and not have to worry about any of this nonsense uh, about all the DRM and restrictions and stuff. Also keep in mind, if you purchase a game from Uplay or Origin, they have no family sharing. So you configure LaunchBox in your living room on that PC we're building to kick off Far Cry 4, and then your daughter's upstairs and she happens to want to play Child of Light, uh, when she starts Child of Light, it, you know, she's using, if she's using your account, uh, you know, you'll get kicked out of the game. And not only that, but you're, you'll have some issues where you're going to have to be forced to re-log in and things like that downstairs. So keep that in mind. 